Welcome back to Tech Air Cities. Baran is coming back to you guys today from the new Yamakasi monitor. That's lighting up my face, so let me know what you guys think. Does it light up my face pretty well? Uh, also, I am using new headphones as well, so uh, after I do the comparison between this and the 4670K, I'm going to be doing a headphone, budget headphone shootout for you guys. So these are some new headphones that I've got. They were $38. And I'm just going to give you a sneak preview. They're amazing. So uh, I'll get onto that later. But here's today we're going with the FX8320. It's an 8-core CPU, 4 modules. Uh, it's 125 watts TDP. It's 32 nanometer. And it's basically touted as one of the value king CPUs out there. But I'm going to be testing it myself, doing my own testing against the 4670K, and then making some realist, realistic real-world uh, recommendations once I've tested everything thoroughly. So anyway, let's have a look today what we get under the in the box. And yeah, let's just see what we get in the box. Okay, so this is what you get. You get a little box. It's about the same size as Intel's box, I guess. Um, maybe a little bit bigger. So this is, as it says here, AMD uh, 8 core processor, black edition. Now, uh, straight away you'll notice with Intel processors too, and this one is it comes sealed. So if that seal's broken, then I recommend you maybe take it back to the store because uh, honestly, they may have simply uh, bind the chip the store that you some stores like to bin chips, you know and then sell them on wherever I don't know really know but basically if it's sealed You know that you're getting a copy or you know you're getting your chip that could be fast or it couldn't be depending on the silicon lottery So that's one thing you got to like about a fully sealed box now looking at so as soon as you open the box uh, the CPU comes out and it's packed really well it's packed just like the Intel CPUs are and that's the chip there. It's a uh, just looks like a nice eight core chip now let's look at the specs of this this is an eight core so look here that this chip here i'll try and give you guys a close-up here so uh let's have a look at this so this is an eight core so an eight core from amd and it basically has 16 megabytes of cache on board and it's eight cores on four modules so uh, basically this cpu is touted as being a really good value for money cpu so I'm going to be mainly, the, my main reason for getting this is also I want to try the AMD architecture, but also want to pit it against the 4670K, as you guys know, and put them head to head. Uh, this one hopefully being at 4.4 gigs, and I'll put the 4, 4670K at 4.2 gigs. So levels that I think anyone can achieve on both chips. So now that's the chip. Let's have a look what we get in the box. What else we get with this box? We basically get AMD's warranty uh, and fan installation manual there. And you also, I mean, as you guys know, the stock heatsink fans are pretty junk. So uh, this is it here. Now these CPUs are touted as running pretty hot. They are 32 nanometer. So one thing I will say is this is 32 nanometer. Intel's are 22 nanometer. So these generally will use more watts um, for the performance. Uh, so it's something that AMD doesn't really, as you guys know, it's one of the uh, disadvantages that AMD currently has versus the Intel CPUs. However, they have the eight cores there, and if um, games and stuff like that can utilize the eight threads, then it is actually going to be to AMD's benefit, or to your benefit, since you're the consumer and you're going to be saving money. Now, this is the fan it comes with. I actually like this fan a lot better than the Intel stock heatsink fan, so I'll compare them side by side for you guys. Uh, basically, I don't really care about the heatsink paste. So <laughs> it's actually, it comes pre-applied with some nice heatsink paste here. Um, now, it's actually not bad. Like, it feels better than the Intel uh, stock heatsink fan that that came with. So uh, the heatsink paste that that came with. So here they are here, side by side. I definitely like AMD's stock heatsink fan a lot better. I mean, if you guys would just, it actually looks like it's made by Cooler Master as well. So it says Cooler Master there, printed on the... Uh, heatsink fan, which is pretty cool. So, uh, Cool Master are making this stock heatsink fan, which is interesting. I've never seen that before, so I didn't know that. So, uh, this heatsink fan feels better than this one. If you're running stock clocks, this is all you're going to need. Uh, same with the Intel. If you're going to overclock, which I am, then I am going to be using this bad boy here. So, <laughs> I'm going to do a review of that soon once I set the whole test bench up. Anyway, uh, this is what you get in the box. You basically get a nice little heatsink fan. And I actually do like it a lot better than Intel's heatsink fan. So, uh, stock heatsink fan. So, um, yeah, so this is what you get in the package. It's pretty well packaged, just like Intel's counterpart. 
and it's good to go. So that's what you get in the box, guys. If you have any questions about the AMD FX 8350 or 8320, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribed to Tech City, where I'm going to be pitting this against the 4670K. Now, lastly, I will say before I go, um, people talk about the FX8320 not being as good as a bin as the 8350 now. My thinking on it is simply that I think some of the 8320s will be bad bins of the 8350s. In other words, um, AMD will test all the CPUs and if they work at 4 gigs native, then they're 8350s. Uh, if they don't, then they'll bin them to 8320s. However, I believe that some of the 8320s will just not be binned at all. Like AMD wouldn't have tested them all because they've got to fulfill 8320 uh, quantities. So that's just my thinking. I think some of them will run really well. Some of them will just be mediocre. Uh, hopefully I've got a good chip. I'm going to be testing it. And as you guys know, the 8320 is ridiculously cheap. I picked mine up for $160 here in Japan. I've seen them go out on sale for $133, I think, the cheapest I've seen them for. $145 as well in the States. So if you guys want to pick this, an 8-core up for pretty cheap, then they sometimes go on for sale really cheap. So uh, that's that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to be testing this, see how good it goes. I'll also be making some guides, tutor overclocking tutorials for this uh, in the near future. So stay tuned for that, and I'll also be making the comparison really soon. Anyway, guys, peace out for now. Brain easy. Bye. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Help me. I don't want to help you. I am with the Intel.